Stay with it. Hi guys. So previously I was in Jeju and I've been in Seoul City for one week. I purposely left this last vlog at the end because there's just so much to cover in the city of Seoul. I wrote it all down, so it's all here. So choosing Seoul as your next city for your vacation is an excellent choice. There is a Telegram chat for the detail. Thanks to the guys in Telegram, I, we found a lot of information, easier time to plan. In the city of Seoul, and in terms of transport, I recommend not to drive as compared to Jeju, where Jeju is a must that you should drive. Uh, it's a huge island where public transport is not really that easy. So in Seoul, the subways and the trains are, are really good. Uh, really connected you can go pretty much anywhere you want uh, for right hailing services we didn't do any of that and grab and gojek doesn't work here unfortunately so you got to try apps like kakao talk uh, most of the apps are in korean so we didn't try so if you do have a uh, right hailing service that you experience in korea please put your comments down below so you can share with the rest who watch this video like so in any other city you know, it's rich in culture it has its own personality and trends. Seoul is well known for these three things. So number one, food and cafe culture. Number two, facial and skin products. Number three, streetwear and sneakers. So let's go more in depth and more detail right now. So the army stew is like a staple in Korea. And look at the cheese. Mung bean pancakes are plenty in the market. So crispy, I love it. And this dumplings were made popular by Netflix. This is the best ginseng chicken ever. If you ever get there, please eat it. Guys, Korean fried chicken. Mmm, so good. And cafe culture is amazing in Seoul. You will be spoiled for choice. And there's so many different themes as well. Just walk in and you will be satisfied, I'm sure. My favorite were Paris Baguette and Tu Le Joux. This one was cash only. Facial care, as you can see, this is just a subset of what my wife and I bought. Uh, usually, half price if what you can compare to Singapore but uh, just to feature some stuff that I bought this Nini uh, toner all in one is like less than 20 bucks uh, I bought this awesome hair sea water spray for myself I think it's like 10 bucks and all these yeah all below 20 as well so it's like awesome uh. hand creams 8 for 10 dollars amazing facial mask yes also 20 for 10? Sorry, this two. Yeah, 20 for 10? Amazing. And one thing about buying facial products in uh, South Korea is the amount of samples. Yeah, these are all samples, my friends. Yes. Sorry, gotta pack it again. <laughs> Cheers. Lifestyle products, street wear, and sneakers. Usually, amazing variety of brands and there's so many outlets there like ABC Mart and S Mart that you can find your uh, desired shoes and for example like apparels like this bum bag I have here $20 Singapore dollars it's very nice and this oversized t-shirt I have here $10 wow amazing right yeah and then this scarf that I bought for my mother 3 Singapore dollars amazing Talking about streetwear and sneakers and all that, the sense of style in Seoul is very apparent. The fashion consciousness is very high here. You can tell by the different magazines that you read that come across in the city of Seoul. Uh, you can see that uh, basically two groups of fashion. One is the street style, where you can get your fashion at reasonable prices. Uh, brands which you may not recognize, but there are street brands here and they're very good. They're very fashionable, very stylish. The other group would be the high fashion, if you like name brands, it's quite apparent here as well. So watches, there's also two groups, the retail luxury watches, as well as the more mainstream watches, or even fashion uh, type accessory watches. My aim was to find as many types of watches in Seoul, and I succeeded. You can go to the, the duty-free stores in Seoul. There are two brands that are quite famous here. One is the Lotte duty-free stores and Shinshige stores as well. So let's go more into detail right here. At Shinshige main store, there was no stock of Rolex and I was not allowed to enter. On the other hand, at Omega, there were ready stocks for the Speedmaster. Unlike Singapore, apparently there's no more stock at all. So I found the Hesselite 1861 below 10,000 Sing. I found another duty-free store called Hyundai at Dongdae Moon. And when I got myself there, I was the only customer. Serious, guys. When I walked through, it was like a deserted mall. 
but I felt very at home because there were so many watches. I found this Tissot gentleman going below Singapore $1,000 and I found PRX as well below $800 Singapore dollars. Many dial colors were available for the gentleman and the PRX and I even found the PRX blue dial at the Incheon airport. So you can find the watches on the streets as well. I found five places. Here is some detail of what I found. It was a challenge on day to find shops, but I managed to find this one, Sagawa Fuji, which is a wooden watch concept. There was only one automatic on sale, a Japanese Miyota movement at about thousand Singapore dollars. Uh, the rest were all quartz wooden watches going for 200 to 600 Singapore dollars. The second shop I found at Hongdae was called Time World. The owner was very happy to say that he was the only full watch shop in Hongdae. In the workshop, you'll see many recognizable brands like Seiko, Casio. I even found the GA2100 Full Black available in stock. There were other brands like Class, I think it's a Swiss brand, Empore Armani, and also a good brand called Maurice Lacroix. And this icon was going at under $2,000. I found this shop called Golden Studio at Ixiong Dong and they had some Swiss brands and Rolexes. There was Datejust, both of men's and ladies going for 5008 to 6005 Singapore dollars as well as this beautiful Submariner half tone going at $18,000 Sing. I was also very pleasantly surprised at Guanjiang Market to find a shop so cool and there's a lot of Rolexes available. I found it quite pleasant to visit because they seem to know what they're doing as well. Wide range of date just and day dates going from 6,000 to 11,000 Singapore dollars. So my last stop was at Nam Day Moon Market and I was happy to see many watch shops along the roadside. This shop had a few vintage precision and date just and this mall uh, called Serona had much more to offer. Uh, I was very overwhelmed by the stores they have, uh, many Swiss and Japanese brands available, clocks as well. And uh, I was looking for the Submariner half tone because I saw it earlier and uh, this shopkeeper didn't allow me to have a pricing so uh, he waved me off. However, I found another shop that uh, sold the new one at $28,000 which is uh, quite expensive. So all in all, I think the experience here is quite amazing. This is my second time in Seoul. It is a country and a place that uh, I want to come back and to experience again. So much more that South Korea has to offer and I cannot wait for my next vacation here. And a lot has happened in the week as uh, I came back to Seoul. The, there was a craziness of Swatch. I made a clip right here, a separate visits video. Please go and check it out. And as well as Watches and Wonders, it was just launched this week. The biggest showcase of uh, watch horology in the world happening right now in Geneva. So amazing times and uh, I really like this uh, time here I spent here. Very memorable. This is the last of my vlog of South Korea this time around. I cannot wait for my next vlog. I'm not sure what I'm going to do but um, yeah, I can't wait for that. So thank you for watching and thanks for staying tuned. And I, your support really means a lot. And do subscribe to my channel and follow my videos. Sorry, like my videos as well. <laughs> it is the last day so I'm going to get out there and have a lot of fun. And take care.